right, so in this module, we're going to go over how to set up users in Pardot. I highly recommend only adding those individuals who be working closely with you on the implementation project as users in Pardot for now. And we'll also wait to add the sales users until we've presented Pardot to them. So to add users, we're gonna go over to our admin, and then we're gonna go down to our user management, and then users. So you'll see I have a couple of users already in Pardot. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a new user. And we'll add in um, our new users. Let's say Kim, Martinique, job title, we're gonna call uh, marketing manager. And phone number, we'll add in her phone number. When we're adding in this additional information, We'll be able to use these small tidbits of information as we're building our emails, and we can pull these in via a variable tag within Pardot. So it's really good as we're setting up the users to make sure we put as much information as possible, because later on down the line, we'll be able to pull it in pretty quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the phone number set up. We are going to pull in the URL of our website, so we'll say kellymetter.com. And then the email will be kim at kellymetter.com. For security purposes, we can expire the user's password after 90 days. They'll have to come in and create a new password every 90 days. Really up to you if you wanna use this. For now, I'm gonna keep it unchecked. We also have this little send activation email. If we're trying to set up all of our sales users, for instance, before we really want them in Pardot, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck the send activation email. I can always go back in and send them the activation email when I'm ready to let them inside Pardot or ready to connect the two devices, Pardot and Salesforce together. If it is for someone that will be working with you during the implementation, definitely go ahead and, and check the send activation email. We have the ability to add in our HTML email signatures. We can build them straight with use of the WYSIWYG editor here, or if you have your code, you can always just copy and paste your code into the code area in here, and it will populate for you. So for instance, let's just say that we don't have a code to uh, create our, our HTML email signature. I can go ahead and just do it right in here And let's say I wanna grab in the job title, grab in the phone number, and grab in the URL. Instead of typing it out, I can go ahead and use a variable tag. That's what I was talking about earlier. And these get really useful when we're building out emails. But I'm gonna grab the variable tag, and I'm gonna go ahead and look down for the user phone number. All right, here we go. So let's get user phone. And then I also want to bring in the user URL. And then let's get in the user email. Perfect. I could also go ahead and add in an image as well. So I'm gonna add in our, I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop my logo in here. Let me find it. All right, I got the logo. I'm gonna drag and drop here. I'm gonna look at the image info. You know, I really don't wanna bring in a, you know, 399. I might wanna make it just 200. And I'm gonna hit okay. And there we go. So we have our user email signature here. We have the first and last name. And then dynamically, or through our variable tags, we went, we went ahead and we pulled in the user's phone number, the user's URL, and their email address. Now we have an area right below for the text email signature. The text email signature will be used, for instance, if um, you're sending emails out to companies that might have high security on their email servers, where they don't allow HTML emails at all. So we would want to put in the same information, the URL, and the email. We won't be able to bring in our picture again because it's just a plain text email signature. It has no HTML, no images, uh, just plain text. If we scroll down further, we do have this area that's for our time zone. 
So we can check and we usually want to put this in the time zone of the user. So let's say that you have offices in LA and Chicago and in New York and you have some of your marketing team who's in New York, some of your marketing team in LA, some of your marketing team in Chicago. We'll want to make sure per user that we are setting them up with their own specific time zone. So since I'm central time zone, I am going to look for Chicago and there we go and I'm going to put Chicago here. As you can see with the CRM username, we are able to create a link to the user in Pardot and their user in Salesforce if they are in Salesforce. And we would want to connect the two here. When we get into roles, we have four defaults to choose from. The first one is administrator. Administrators have access to all settings, prospect data, and modules within Pardot. Our marketing users have control over prospect data, marketing modules, including creating new lists, forms, landing pages, and sending emails. I'm going to skip over for sales for now and go down to sales manager. A sales manager has access to all prospect data and visitors, but they don't have the marketing functionality. Sales managers may send one-to-one -one emails to their prospects, but they can't send list emails. And then if we jump to sales, sales users really have the simplest interface and only have access to their prospect management functionality. Sales users may send one-to-one -one emails to their prospects only, but they can't send list emails. They can view, edit, and export only those prospects assigned to them. Further down, we do have the ability to limit certain security items for each user. We can limit prospect imports, we can limit prospect exports, and we can limit email sending. Just as a quick note, if we place a zero, we're actually giving them unlimited access. I know it's kind of wonky, but it's a good note to remember. So if you do want to limit, I highly suggest placing a one instead. Further down, we're able to set our email preferences for each user. The daily prospect activity emails will send a daily email with all assigned prospects who have had some type of activity, such as viewing our website, opening an email, downloading a PDF, etc. The second item will send an email from Pardot each time a prospect is assigned to this user. I really recommend having this come from Salesforce as it's the master CRM, so I would turn this off. We do have the option to send a daily digest of all new assigned prospects here. So if you don't want to send it from Salesforce and you don't want to send a new email each time someone gets assigned to them, we can consolidate it into a once daily prospect assignment email. Our other option is to send daily visitor activity emails. This will send a report on prospects who we still haven't identified by name or email yet. And when we click this, we will notice that it drops down and we can say we want to see all visitors or maybe this user is only interested in, in visitors who come from the West Coast. So I would hit filter visitors by geography and we notice that we have it separated out by the United States, Canada, Europe, Asia Pacific, Middle East and Africa and Central and South America. So let's say this user is only interested in West Coast visitors. So I would come over here and I would select California. And I would also select Nevada. And maybe I want to select Washington and Oregon. Perfect. After our selection for sending daily visitor activity emails, we do have the ability to send starred prospect activity alerts. So what does this actually mean? Uh, we do have the ability in Pardot to star certain prospects, meaning they're hot prospects. And maybe we want to keep track of everything that they are doing on our website or within Pardot in general. So I can go ahead and say, Pardot, keep an eye on these people. They're my starred prospects and send me once a day any of their activities. Our weekly search marketing emails is a recap of our keywords and competitors we may be monitoring within Pardot, and it will send it out each Monday. And the last option here is new within Pardot. It's send monthly and active automations report email. So what does this mean? As we start getting into some of our automations, 
Um, maybe they haven't triggered in a while, in over a month. So Pardot's gonna send us a note, and this is a great way of keeping our instance clean, saying, hey, this automation rule hasn't triggered in over a month. This dynamic list hasn't changed in over a month. This engagement studio hasn't been active in over a month. Maybe we might wanna clean that up. So it is something that we get monthly into our emails, which is great. I would highly recommend only selecting this for our Pardot administrators. We don't wanna muddy up our user's inbox. And speaking of our user's inbox, as we are setting up our users, I really suggest just turning off all of these emails because we don't want to send them Pardot activity emails yet um, when they haven't been introduced to Pardot. We can also show some of our other administrators within Pardot uh, their user preferences and how they can change these in the future. So with that being said, I'm gonna go back up. I'm gonna look at all my information. I don't wanna send them an activation right now. We have our HTML signature. We have our text email signature. We selected their time zone. Uh, we don't have a CRM user for this particular user. I forgot to select the role. Let's just say for this role, I wanna select them as marketing. And I don't wanna send any emails and I'm also not going to limit any of their imports and exports. So I'm gonna go ahead and create user. Perfect, so this user has been saved successfully. It did give me alert that we did not select a CRM username for this user, which is okay. And this user has not yet activated their account, which is great because we didn't send an activation email. So just as an FYI, let's just say this is a couple weeks from now, you're up and running in Pardot, you're ready to connect your sales users who you might have already put in as users within here, but now you're ready to send them their activation email. We can scroll down here and we can send an activation email right here. And once we click that link, they will get that activation email from Pardot. We also have the ability to do a mass import of users within Pardot. There's a lot of us who have uh, pretty massive sales teams. So we're gonna go ahead and do the import users feature. I have included a template in the resource section of this video as a CSV file that we can use to import our users. Uh, really one of the things that we wanna make sure we have is their email address, their first name, their last name, and we really wanna make sure we have role. Although role is not a required field, I do recommend making sure that you set this up right off the bat. So once you do have your CSV file, you can choose your file and go ahead and import all of your users. One thing to note, you won't be able to set a user's preferences from an import. So if we go and jump back into the user section, I'm gonna go back to administrator, user management and users. You'll notice that we have user groups. User groups are used for round robin lead assignment. For example, let's go ahead and create a group called West Coast Sales Reps. I'm gonna go ahead and add a user group and I'm gonna call it our West Coast Sales Reps. And I'm gonna create group. So within this group, I wanna assign some users that I have that belong on the West Coast and I want them to be added into this group. If I select these three users, I can add users to group, and I wanna add them to my West Coast sales reps. And I'm gonna hit go, and I'm gonna put okay. Now we'll see that we have three users and our West Coast sales reps. So now that we've created this group, when we assign to this group, Pardot will automatically give the lead to one of the group members, ensuring fair and equal distribution of all leads. The last section under the user module are queues. Salesforce queues allow us to integrate prospect assignment with our current Salesforce workflow. Rather than assigning to a specific user or a specific group in Pardot, we can choose to assign leads to a Salesforce queue and then use our Salesforce workflow or another manual method of distributing leads to our sales representatives. Queues allow us to use the benefits of Pardot lead management without disrupting our current workflow. So to add a queue, we're gonna go ahead and add queue. We'll be able to choose our queues from Salesforce. If you just created a new queue, make sure you hit this refresh button just so it does sync up. 
and then we can say, great, I want to grab my Pardot queue that I just created, and I'm going to create a queue here. So now I can see that I've created my queue, and later on, if I want to assign to my queue and let Salesforce take over, I'm able to assign to my Pardot queue. So this wraps up our technical section. Again, I strongly suggest you implement your website tracking code, your DNS entries, and your CNAME before moving on to the other modules.